everybody. Right, this meeting of the Escambia County Planning Board for July 5th is hereby called to order with four voting members present. Uh, we have a quorum. I uh, hope everybody had a good 4th of July and uh, enjoyed the, the long weekend. And we'll have a nice short week this week and hopefully everybody can enjoy the uh, Blue Angels air show going on the rest of this week. Uh, just a reminder to turn off all electronic devices and uh, at this time if you'll stand and, and join us in the pledge. Do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, sir. Okay. The chair will now entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal advertisement. So moved. Second. Okay, the motion is second. Um, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, motion passes. All right, the rezoning meeting minutes from the previous meeting day to June 7th, 2022 has been provided to the board members are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? All right, the chair will entertain a motion to accept the rezoning meeting minutes into evidence. Do we so, have so moved. Got second. Motion. motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All right, motion passes. The rezoning hearing package for July 5th with findings and facts has been provided to the board members. The chair will entertain a motion to accept the rezoning hearing package with findings of fact and legal advertisement into evidence. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? Motion passes. All right. The rezoning hearing package with findings of fact and legal advertisement will be marked and included in the record for all of today's cases. Will the court reporter please swear in members of staff? Well, it was going to touch upon a race coming in. You saw him in the square. Well, it's not a testimony about the people in the case. We'll be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and so you do a question. And also, you will be back there. Yep. Did you have your hand raised? Yes. He did. <laughs> All right. The board has previously qualified staff to offer expert testimony in the area of land use and planning. Does anyone have any questions regarding? their qualifications and ability to offer expert testimony. All right. At this hearing, the planning board is acting under, under its authority to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on rezoning applications. These hearings and quasi -judicial are quasi-judicial in nature. Quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in the court of law, however, less formal. All testimony being given under oath will be given under oath and anyone testifying before the planning board may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the planning board considers will be entered into evidence and made part of this record. Opinion testimony will be limited to experts and closing arguments be limited to the evidence in the record. Before making a decision, the planning board will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable law. Each individual who wishes to address the planning board must complete a speaker request form and submit it to the planning board clerk and those are located in the back of the room. These forms are, are you will be able to, uh, you will not be allowed to speak until we receive a completed form. Please note that the only individuals who are present and give testimony on record at this hearing before the planning board will be allowed to speak at the subsequent hearing before the Board of County Commissioners. No new evidence can be presented at the BCC meeting, therefore, all testimony and evidence must be presented today. The planning board will provide a recommendation for each rezoning request to the BCC, which will review testimony, documents, and exhibits, consider the closing arguments, and make a final decision. All decisions by the BCC are final. Anyone who wishes to speak, seek judicial review of the decision of the BCC, must do so in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the date the BCC approves or rejects the recomm recommended order of the planning board. All written or oral communications outside of this hearing with the members of the planning board regarding matters under consideration today are considered ex parte communication. Ex parte communications 
are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in BCC resolution number 96-13. As each case is heard, the chair will ask any board member who have been involved in ex parte communication, please identify themselves and describe the communication. As required by section 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code, the planning board's recommendations to the BCC shall include considerations of the following six approval conditions. Consistent with comprehensive plan, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan and not in conflict with any of its provisions. Consistent with the LDC, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the stated purposes and intent of the LDC and not in conflict with any of its provisions. Compatibility. All land uses, development activities, and conditions allowed by the proposed zoning are compatible with the surrounding conforming uses, activities, and conditions, and able to coexist in relative proximity to them in a stable fashion over time, such that no use, activity, or condition negatively impacts another. The appropriateness of the rezoning is not limited to any specific use that may be proposed, but is evident for all permitted uses of the requested zoning. This condition shall not apply to any conditional uses of the proposed district or compatibility with non-conforming or unapproved uses, activities, or conditions. Change conditions. The area to which the proposed rezoning would apply has changed or is changing to such a degree that it is in the public interest to encourage new uses, densities, or intensities in the area through rezoning. Development patterns. The proposed rezoning would contribute to or result in a logical and orderly development pattern. Effect on natural environment, the proposed rezoning would not increase the probability of any significant adverse impacts on the natural environment. At the beginning of each case, as long as there are no objections from the applicant, we will allow staff to brief briefly present the location and zoning maps and photos for the property. Next, we will hear from the applicant and any witnesses that he or she may wish to call. Then we will hear from staff and any witnesses they may wish to call. Finally, we will hear from the members of the public who have filled out a speaker request form. All right, today uh, we have three cases to be heard. The first rezoning application for consideration is case number Z 2022 07, which requests rezoning um, of 9720 Tower Ridge Road from LDR to MDR uh, as requested by the applicant. Members of the board, have there been any ex parte communication between you and the applicant of the applicant's agents, attorneys, or witness with fellow planning board members or anyone from the general public prior to this hearing? Have you visited the subject property? Please also disclose if you are a relative or business associate of the applicant or the applicant's agent. All right, we'll start with uh, Mr. Adams. Yes, sir, I am gonna disclose, even though I'm a non-voting member, uh, I have a mother-in-law and father-in-law that lives across the road, slightly to the south. My wife grew up there, so we know this family. So uh, I, I have no other issues involved. No at all. Eric? Do you, want to, you have to say it too. Oh, yes, chair, <laughs> no at all. Sorry. Uh, Here. No to all, I am familiar with the property. It's less than one mile from my house. No to all. All right. Um, let's see if I'm on the right page here. Staff was notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. All right. Was notice of the hearing posted on the subject property? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so we can either go to the applicant or you, would you like staff to go through the, uh, the photos and, and aerials first? Okay. Good morning, board. Um, Allison Lindsay, Urban Planner Development Services. <clears throat> so this is a request for um, 9720 Tower Ridge Road to go from um, LDR to MDR. So this is a location map showing the location of the site. This is the zoning map showing the current LDR and the surrounding LDR and RMU. This is the future land use, mixed use, suburban. And this is the existing land use map. And this is the aerial photo of the site. This is the public hearing sign that was posted on site. And this is looking into the subject property. And this is just another view of the subject property. 
This is the parcel next to the subject property that's being developed. This is looking south along Tower Ridge. This is looking north along Tower Ridge. This is looking across the street on Tower Ridge from the subject property. And that's the maps and photography. Do you want me to go into the findings or do you want the applicant to? Um, would you like for the staff to go over the findings or would you like to present first? I'm fine to go ahead. All right. Sounds good. Ms. Bush. Meredith Bush here on behalf of the property owner and applicant. We are seeking to rezone this parcel from LDR to MDR. I will run through the criteria in the code, um, which does agree, our, our submittal does agree with staff's findings in this case. Um, and then I understand we have members of the public present who wish to speak. Um, and I'll reserve any final comments. So as to criteria A, the proposed amendment is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use category of MUS. Medium density residential zoning may be established only within the MUS and MUU future land use categories. Criteria B, consistent with zoning district provisions. The proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The parcel is adjacent to low density residential and rural mixed use zoning districts. As outlined in the land development code, the medium density residential district establishes appropriate areas and land use regulations for a transition between areas zoned for low density residential and areas zoned that are used for high density residential or mixed use, as in this case. The primary intent of the district is to provide residential neighborhood development in an efficient urban pattern of well-connected streets and at a greater den dwelling unit density than the low density residential district. Residential uses within the MDR district are limited to single family and two family dwellings. As to criteria C, compatible with surroundings, the proposed amendment is compatible with the surrounding existing uses in the area. Within a 2,000 foot radius area, the applicant identified properties within zoning districts RMU, LDR, MDR, and LDMU. The existing surrounding development is residential. A number of subdivisions to include the Antietam Pud and Busby Plantation are in the general vicinity and copies of those surrounding plats were submitted with our application. To ensure additional compatibility with existing adjacent uses, if the amendment is approved, further review and evaluation through the development review committee process would be necessary at the time of um, actual development. Appropriate if spot zoning, criteria D. The amendment request, if granted, would be appropriate as transitional in nature. The land development code does not prohibit spot zoning. In this case, where the proposed zoning would establish or reinforce a condition of spot zoning as defined in Chapter 6, the isolated district is nonetheless appropriate because it would be transitional in character between the adjoining districts, and the differences with those districts would be minor or sufficiently limited. The property is situated between the adjacent LDR zoning and adjacent RMU zoning. MDR is an appropriate transitional zoning category. Further, the differences between the existing districts and the proposed MDR districts are minor. Rezoning to MDR is in keeping with the growth patterns in the area. And finally, uh, criteria E, appropriate with changed or changing conditions. Based on the existing uses and intensities and the zoning district allowances, the proposed amendment would not create urban sprawl and would be compatible with existing development. It is in the public interest to allow MDR zoning to create a transitional zone between LDR and RMU properties. The change is appropriate in an area that is surrounded by growing residential uses. The proposed rezoning will contribute to a logical and orderly development pattern. And I'm happy to take any questions. And um, just so I've got everything for the record, um, can I have you state your full name and address for the record? And then um, I forgot to do that, so I apologize. Uh, and then have you and then did you receive a copy of the rezoning hearing package and findings of fact yes absolutely so my, my name is meredith bush i'm an attorney with clark partington that address is 125 east intendencia pensacola florida 32502 and i did receive a copy of the staff's findings okay great and then uh, do you understand that you have the burden of providing by substantial competent evidence that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plans furthers the goals objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan and is not in conflict with any portion of the county's land development code yes okay great 
And then I see we've got um, Jay has come in, and so I just want to make sure um, that we go go through the ex parte communication with you um, as well. Um, so has there been any ex parte communication between you and the applicant, uh, the applicant's agents, attorneys, witnesses, and the or fellow planning board members, or anyone from the general public public prior to this hearing? And have you visited the subject park property? And please disclose if you or a relative or business associate of the applicant or applicant's agent. Um, no to all. No to all. Okay, great. Thank you. First day on the job here, so I'm just trying to do my best. Um, okay, so did any anyone from the board have questions at this time for the applicant? All right, sounds good. We may be, may be back to you. All right, we'll turn it over to, uh, to staff at this time. Okay. So the rezoning from LDR to MDR, um, the first one criteria consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the pro proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use mixed use suburban. The current future land use allows for residential as well as non-residential uses while promoting uh, compatible infill development and separation of urban and suburban land uses. Um, criteria B, consistent with the land development code. The proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The proposed zoning to MDR is a single family unless prior zoning was R3 or V4. The code states that if the prior zoning was R3 or V4, two family or multifamily is allowed. However, the previous zoning in this parcel was rural residential. Therefore, any future development will be limited to single family lots. Medium density residential will allow 10 dwelling units per acre versus the LDR of four dwelling units per acre and the lot width difference of 50 feet for MDR versus the 60 feet for the LDR. Our view of the current zoning map shows the property is surrounded by LDR, <coughs> RMU, and LDMU <coughs> zoning. Changing the zoning to MDR would allow um, single family dwellings and then two family and multifamilies are not outright permitted uses compatible with the surrounding uses. The proposed amendment is compatible with the surrounding existing uses. Within the 500 feet, there was identified properties within the zoning district of LDR, LDMU, and RMU. The parcel currently surrounded by LDR and RMU zonings and, any, and the proposed development would be consistent with similar densities and intensities of the area. The existing uses and intensities on the ground are compatible with the allowable uses under the requested MDR zoning, which is single family. Appropriate if spot condition, if spot zoning. <clears throat> it was determined that the proposed MDR zoning would be consistent with spot zoning based on the definition of spot zoning. However, the request to rezone to MDR would make the parcel equally compatible with the adjacent zoning and the existing uses would not reinforce spot zoning as defined in the land development code. The adjacent properties are LDR, however the properties to the west across Tower Road are already developed with a zoning of RMU, making the MDR a transitional zoning. Criterion E appropriate with change or change conditions. The land uses or the development conditions within the area surrounding the properties haven't changed and the development within the areas will remain low to mixed use residential. And with the request to MDR, the potential uses, densities, and intensities allowed by the district would be compatible with the existing surrounding development patterns. The proposed amendment would not create uh, or contribute to urban sprawl. Now that's the end of the staff. Uh, does anyone have any questions for staff at this point? No? All right. Um, I guess we will move on to public comment. So for those members of the public who wish to speak on this matter, please note the planning board bases its decision on the approval conditions and exceptions described in section 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code. During its deliberations, the planning board will not consider general statements of support or opposition. Accordingly, please limit your testimony to the approval conditions and exceptions described in section 2 Dash 7.2, please also note that the only individuals who are present and give testimony on the record at this hearing before the planning board will be allowed to speak at the subsequent hearing before the BCC. Um, and remember to please state your full name and address for the record and be sworn in. 
So our first speaker is Melissa Sellers. Good morning. Good morning. And you, uh, just a reminder, you each have three minutes to speak, and we've got a we've got a timer up here. So I understand. Yes, ma'am. Um, Melissa Sellers, 9740 Tower Ridge Road. Thanks. Uh, and then could you just make sure you're speaking into the microphone so we can all, okay. all hear you? Um, what all the directions you just gave were were pretty fast and you know, there's a lot of legalistic things in there. Um, so I'm probably not going to be following this exactly correctly like you said it. It has to be addressing one of those specific conditions. Um, obviously, I was, uh, you know, if I'm going to say these things, I'm, I'm not speaking in favor of the proposal, and you don't take generalized oppositions. So, um, I, you know, a lot of the things that I was going to say are not applicable. But I don't see how you can say it's not urban sprawl because right now it's low density residential. They can already have 20 units, almost 20 units on that, almost, it's not quite five acres next door to us. Um, I don't see how you can say it's not urban sprawl when you're when when they're if they get this request it's going to be 50 units they can build almost 50 units i mean up and down that road sure we've got antietam we've got vintage creek we've recently tolerated both of those it's a lot of units um we've only got about 65 i'd say around 65 um sites up and down that road so um i'm not sure exactly what the what the future land use is on those I don't know what it is you know I'm not an activist I don't dig into this I just live there so I'm I'm really concerned about how much and I know you hear this all the time it's boring to you growth 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 in Beulah you know everybody's tired of it we're tired of more houses we're tired of more people spilling onto our roads well we've got and we've accepted Antietam we've accepted Vintage Creek but those were big pieces of property and that <laughs> change was probably you know something to be expected this one, it's not really surprising to me. I mean, certainly it would maximize return on the investment for those inheritance, but it's just, um, I wouldn't consider it consistent and I wouldn't consider it not to be urban sprawl, but I don't know the legal parts of this. So, and I'm probably not going to hire an attorney. Um, so the rest of what I was gonna say is probably a moot point. Um, the border, Mr. Chairman. Quality of life is to be considered after you consider the criteria. That's according to land development code. Yep. Okay. So whatever she has to say is right now. Uh, Ms. Sellers has a floor, and Ms. Sellers, you are able to speak about anything. I'm, I know we had um, some some things I said before the general, uh, you know, before we got up here and spoke today. But uh, it is your time, and and um, you know we're willing to to hear anything that you have to say in your in your three minutes. So. Um, you got about a minute left. If there's anything else you want to add, we're more than happy to hear it. I appreciate that. I really, I really don't think there's anything else I have to add. Um, I, I just, I hope you'll give careful consideration to taking a very close look at that. I mean, we're talking about a parcel on Tower Ridge Road that hasn't, hasn't been. I mean, uh, none of the other adjacent properties are 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 high are medium density residential. They've all got, you know, I mean, they have the capacity to build up to 20 units. No one has yet. They could. I understand that. That's their right. But, you know, especially if you have five acres or whatever, you know, and I, I don't know, like I said, in depth, but just please take a close look at that. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank that. you so much. All right. Our next speaker is Danny Sellers. And just a reminder, please state your full name and address for the record and be sworn in. Uh, my name is Danny Sellers. I live at 9740. Tower Ridge Road, and we also own a lot beside it, 9760. Regulation, please. You sign this for the testimony you're about to give in this case. Will you repeat the oath you're probably about to take after that? I do. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, I agree with my wife, everything she said, and I won't, I won't repeat any of that, but we moved out there in 11 to a, a rural area, which is now not so rural anymore, so that's why I oppose, you know, like 50 units next door to us on our property line. So thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify, that gives him permission to speak at the county commission meeting about all those subjects. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Each, let me be clear for the, for the record, because we always got to preserve the record. He can, he can Horace Jones, the director. He can only address. He can only say 
what he said. He cannot add no more additional testimony. He can only say what he said. So I just want to be clear for the record. So I would argue that if he wanted to expound any, he'd be given an opportunity to do it now. So Mr. Sellers, if there was um, the way this works, if you would like to speak at the Board of County Commission meeting in a, in a few weeks uh, when they make the final decision on this case uh, and this, this zoning case here, um, if there was any conditions or any other thing that you would like to say, you're only you're limited to what you spoke about here today. Um, so if there's anything else you want to add. Okay, so if you're good with, with what you said and all right then okay thanks so much okay our next speaker is uh miss teresa blackwell and then again just state your name full name and address for the record and be sworn in before we start my time i'm going to need my three minutes so um i would like to have you pull up the current zoning map please so we can look at that i'll be addressing criterion d thank you Teresa Blackwell, good morning. Teresa Blackwell, um, 6670 Wonder Lake Road in Beulah. Um, like many, I moved to Beulah for the open spaces, the trees, the houses on big lots. D.R. Horton has come for the big lots, but this rezoning will open the floodgates for many lot subdivisions on the smaller four to five acre parcels that give Beulah much of its character. Low density residential zoning on the nearly five acre lot already la allows up to four houses per acre. Medium density would allow up to 10. This would more than double the potential housing density from 19 to 49 houses. That is not a minor difference as the code describes. The zoning, uh, this would create an isolated district of MDR in the middle of LDR and RMU. RMU is up to two houses per acre. The county allows spot zoning if it creates a logical transition between two zoning types for medium density residential. Uh, the code specifically mentions between low and high density residential. All you have to do is look at that map and uh, the district is, a, and, and that code says the district is appropriate to provide transitions between areas zoned for, or used for low density residential and areas zoned or used for high density residential or mixed use. MDR is not a logical transition between two much lower densing categories. No matter what kind of math you use, 10 is not a number that belongs between two and four. The applicant says this upzoning would, should go forward because that's what's happening in the area. A misleading subdivision map on page 58, if you could pull that up, I'd appreciate it, has large areas colored green to indicate subdivisions where there is large lot residential. In fact, there are no subdivisions on that map that were developed as medium density subdivisions. The Heritage Creek subdivision has medium density zoning, but it was developed with less than four houses per acre within the limits of LDR. The Meadowfield subdivision is also zone MDR, but developed with quarter acre lots within LDR limits. The nearby Antietam subdivision has smaller lots than LDR allows, but that is a planned unit development. They agreed to extras like sidewalks, more trees, and a walking trail in return for smalling, smaller lots. Antietam remains low density residential. The same part, of the LDR um, that talks about MDR, it says the district should be suitable for, uh, should have central water and sewer and develop street networks. I question whether a 30 foot right of way meets that criteria and whether this property is connected to sewer. Finally, moratorium. Since a solicitation for a Beulah master plan closed on June 30, we should not be upzoning anything in Beulah until we get that master plan in place. Thank you. Thank you, you Ms. Blackwell. Very much. Ms. Blackwell, you referenced a map. We failed to find that map. You said page, page 58. 58. It, it's not in this file. Uh, that's the problem. It is in the, it is in what was distributed to the public. 
It probably was withdrawn after I publicly criticized it. This is page 58 now in okay, the Okay, well, go to the very end and start going up. It's got areas painted green. It's almost at the, it's almost at the bottom of the page. There it is. Is that it? Yeah, unfortunately it's sideways. But there are large areas there that are actually large lot residential. I own one of those lots over on Western Way. Those are very large lots. It was like a three quarter size lot. Heritage Creeks, they're also a large lot. Um, there are other areas, you know, it's very hard to talk about it with it sideways, but uh, there are many other areas there that are actually single family residential large lot, which, which were misleadingly colored in as green. The other thing is, um, this application conflates medium density residential with subdivision. Those are two very different things, and we don't have anything developed as medium density residential. It's not a PUD in that area at all. So this is not a logical transition, not in the least. I, 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 I wonder that anyone could begin to pretend that it is. And, you know, uh, staff has told me in confidence that they have been told, say yes to everything if you possibly can. And I noticed that some who used to say no are no longer here providing analysis. It's the ones who say yes who are here for you. So, uh, you know, <coughs> take that in consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is that the, let's see. Did uh, the applicant, did you want to add anything? Um, is that, the I, I, that is the end of the speakers, yes. I, so. I would like. I would like first Sorry. want to know if uh, the director of staff would like to respond to the accusation that y'all have been instructed. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for that. I don't know who this, this, this statement was made referring to, but I do, I do say this. My staff as a director, we do, we base our findings upon the recommendation of the land development code. If it meets the code, if it, if it meets the code, it meets the code. If it does not, we will say that. We are not influenced, per se, by what somebody tell us to do. The code is the standard, and this is what we go by. This is what we present. So I do strongly, with all due respect to Ms. Blackwell, object and oppose to that outlandish statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sammons, for the opportunity to respond. Thank you. Um, all right, Meredith. Yes, good morning again. I would like to respond to some of the uh, points made. Um, I guess, first of all, the map of surrounding subdivisions, that came directly from county GIS. There is a GIS map layer that outlines subdivisions so the county's map is what colored in the green. Um, there's no indication, nor was it an attempt to, re to represent that as MDR zoning or what the zoning is, but that is where there are existing subdivisions being developed in this area. As residential growth, as you all know, is booming out um, in this part of town. Um, this um, would not create urban sprawl as defined by the code. And then the other point made regarding spot zoning, the way the code reads, MDR is an appropriate and logical transitory category between low density residential and high density residential or mixed use. It doesn't have to be only high density residential. So this would be appropriate as it is between the rural mixed use category, which is a mixed use category. It allows for non-residential uses and the low density residential to the surrounding area. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I also have one of the developers present if you have questions for him. Um, I believe he filled out a speaker form as well. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not, this is on the next case. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my two cases mixed up. So I do not have a developer present. I don't believe he's, no, I do not have a developer present on this one. All right, does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Meredith, or Ms. Bush, I have a, a comment and, and a question. In the, the uh, if you look at the purpose for LDR versus MDR, 
for LDR states, the primary intent of the district is to provide for large, single lot suburban type residential neighborhood development. For medium density, under the purpose, it says the primary intent of the district is to provide for residential neighborhood development in an efficient urban pattern of well-connected streets. I would submit that that is a big difference, and that's why we have these separate uh, zoning districts. So I think it's a stretch to say that uh, this is a transition between uh, LDR and MRU, or uh, uh, the, uh, the rural district. I'd just like you, if you could explain that, how you, how you come to the conclusion that that is a transition. There's a big difference between the two. So within that same code section for MDR, it's subparagraph, let's see, is it 3-2.7 subparagraph F rezoning to MDR? Medium density residential zoning may be established only within the mixed use suburban and mixed use urban future land use categories. The district is suitable for suburban or urban areas with central water and sewer and developed street networks. The district is appropriate to provide transitions between areas zoned for low density residential and areas zoned or used for high density residential or mixed use. So the code itself calls it out as appropriate as transitional between areas zoned or used for low density residential mm -hmm. and areas zoned or used for high density residential or mixed use. But I'll agree with you that MDR, I mean, it's a higher density category. So um, the trend would be towards there being more bodies, a less rural feel if you're talking about a large lot subdivision. So um, on your point as the purpose of MDR being different than LDR, yes, the purpose of MDR is different in that it allows for higher density. Um, however, the code specifies that it is appropriately transitional between low density and mixed use. Could we call up the zoning map? You know, when I look, look at that, I don't see how it can possibly provide a transition between it's surrounded by LDR in RMU, I don't, I, there needs to be another zoning category for it to transition. This is a clear, unfortunately, this is a clear, a clear uh, example of spot zoning. I mean, there's, there's no way to, to get around that. Right, and we address that in our submission and, and acknowledge that this is a spot of MDR and not otherwise surrounded by MDR. However, the code doesn't straight out prohibit spot zoning. Spot zoning is not, it's not, is this spot zoning, therefore the answer is no, you can't develop. The question then becomes, is this spot zoning, is it appropriate given the surrounding development and the development trends? Um, and my response to that is the code itself recognizes that spot zoning is okay when transitional and the code specifically says that MDR is an appropriate transitional category between RMU, which you see there, um, to the, I guess that's to the west, and LDR, which otherwise surrounds the property. I have a question for staff. I'd like you to provide your thought process uh, for the statement with respect to your findings with the uh, uh, criteria D, where you say, uh, it was determined that the proposed MDR zoning would be considered spot zoning. And then you go on to say, based on the definition, however, and this is the part I'd like to get your thought process and how you came to this conclusion. However, the request to rezone to MDR will make the parcel equally compatible with the adjacent zoning. And the existing uses would not reinforce spot zoning as defined in the LDC. Could you please explain how you came to that conclusion? Okay, so the low density residential is strictly for residential uses. It's four dwelling units per acre. The next level of residential that is still no retail sales, no retail service, 
medium density residential, even though it's got a higher dwelling unit from 10, it's still residential. It still would result in a logical development. Here again, you have no mixed uses. You have no uh, commercial uses. It's strictly in medium density residential with the 10 dwelling units per acre. And if you do the calculations, once you put in the roads, the infrastructure, you're not going to get the total of the 10 dwelling units per acre for the four point something uh, acres it has. Um, and as they said in the land development code in, in the definition for spot zoning, it isn't, because it's spot zoning doesn't mean it's prohibited. Um, and I think you have to use, you know, it's residential. You're not going to LDMU, which is low density mixed use. Um, you're not going to a mixed use, you're strictly going to residential. Um, so I don't think that the, it is an up zoning, um, but here again, you're not going to get the 10 dwelling units in, uh, total in your development. And according to the permitted uses in LDR and MDR, they are basically identical with the exception of the number of dwelling units. You can only have single family. Uh, you can't have two family, multifamily. Thank you, Allison. Uh, I would submit that uh, the, the major differences in our zoning districts are the number of uh, dwelling units allowed per acre. And I mean, you, you stated it is a clear case of up zoning. And I'm not the smartest guy up here, but I, I know when you go from two units to four units, 10 units doesn't come between two and four. So I, I don't understand where it's transitioning to. Well, here again, the, the RMU is across Tower Ridge Road, so it's not adjacent land. Um, the LDR with the four dwelling units per acre and the MDR, um, yes, you're right. 10 is more than four, but then you're not gonna get the total 40 or 50 units when you start doing development for single family. It's still saying it's still saying staying in the realm of single family residential. I appreciate that. And again, that's uh, just based on the criteria, and that's what we uh, base our decision on. It's you know makes it very difficult when it, it in this case it's you don't get a, a more clear case of a spot zoning. So I'm gonna. I'll stop there. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, do we have other five-acre tracks in this area? Because, you know, we do have Kingsfield and Tate that's at capacity. So is this the first of a five-acre track that we're going to put this many houses on in this, in this Beulah area? Because most of my know is just kind of bigger developments going back. There may be other parcels that are four and five acres, but I'm, I didn't do any research on the, the right. near surrounding roadways for, I mean, we don't have any plans that I, I'm aware right. of, but. I just, I didn't know if this is like the first, okay. you know, and, uh, and how many houses can you put on five acres with this? I mean, what would be your estimate with that had the drainage pond and every, everything else? <laughs> The gross density is what? Ten, uh, ten. ten dwellings for MDR. So they could put ten. Yes. Yeah. That, that. Well, if, if you say four point something, so it's say 40 something acre. Uh, 40 something houses. Lot, houses, but then you're not going to get the 40 something once you put 66 foot roads and the infrastructure and the sidewalks and everything that's required, stormwater ponds. So I'm not sure. Okay, what. I think you know where my concern is because the, the bigger developers, which I have talked to a few here, last couple of weeks you know we know kind of what's coming so i just was worried that this five acre track happens like the zoning that we're going to put on it then we'll have another five acres another five acres and another five acres all the way across instead of a planned this is the thing this this is the thing mr adams um yeah. your concerns we do not take no more concerns lightly but yeah. we do this is what we do say is that every case must stand on its own merits. Um, every case, every lot got to stand on its own merits. Um, every rezoning case got to stand on its own merits. And, 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 
and 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 if we see a trend per se, then we'll we'll take a look at that line and we'll see if there's any adjustments or anything that needs to be made. But at this time, at this time, I do not see a trend happening. This could be the first, that it could be other areas. But again, as Ms. Allison stated so well, we have not researched that. We have not seen that. We don't have the data on that. But it is, it is true that that's the gross density. And that when you do put in your rows and stormwater ponds, that is going to be reduced drastically. Because the, the lot size and lot width and all those other things has to go along with a subdivision. So, so remember, 10 is the gross. But when you start putting in the infrastructure, that can be reduced, that going to substantially reduce it as well. Okay, and I think you see what I'm talking about. So I is anecdotal, but uh, I've been around Beulah a lot, and I haven't seen where we've tried to stick this many houses on this small parcel. So that, that would be my concern from the school district. If we're going to have 30 more of these, you know, like this in the next year, <laughs> you know, so. And if I may just yeah. address your concerns, um, there are not plans submitted at this time, but um, I would agree with what county staff has said that there are other constraints where you're not going to get that maximum of 49 on this particular parcel. Um, and as to whether or not other developers may be coming through, that doesn't, while it's important for you to consider as the planning board and as part of your charge, it doesn't necessarily address the criteria on this particular um, application or affect our request you know we're not responsible for what other developers may or may not be thinking about doing all right thank you you know I just uh, in, in my response to you is, is that I think that I, I have spent a lot of time out in that area and I have seen some smaller small developments um, and I, I think but I do think you can absolutely bet as long as interest rates don't slow down uh, the construction of new homes, that the growth in this county is going to go Beulah and north. And that, that's just the way it is. That's the direction it's going to go. Does anyone else uh, have any comments for, or questions for staff or the applicant? I've got one question. Uh, this this subdivision to the southwest of the applicant's property, um, I think it was maybe mentioned that this was a special project or a, a different kind of development that went on there. How many um, dwellings per acre on that lot? Is it four? Or is it more than that? Um, are you talking about across Tower Ridge and the RMU? Correct. No, no, south of Antietam, I guess is. Oh. Um, I don't know how many. We'll, we'll have to we'll have, I cannot recall, but that, you, you, you're right, Mr. Chairman. That was, Miss Blackwell is definitely right. That was a planned unit development. Uh, 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 they had they had to come with that to put some different type of other enhancements that were basically so that they can get that planned unit development. At the time, we can we can find that up and see what it was. But it was a it was a very it was a planned unit development because they needed to have different uh, enhancements because of that type of uh, subdivision that was coming in that area. But we can try to give you that information. We can try to research it. Gotcha. All right. Um, yes, sir. I would, and I actually have two things. I'd, I'd like for y'all to go back to the pictures you showed at the beginning and sort of go through them a little bit slow. Keep going. I'll tell you when I want you to stop. Okay, all right, I'm good. Um, go ahead and show me the others just to make sure I didn't miss see something. Okay, keep going. Okay, all right, I'm good. I, I thought I saw transmission facilities running through that property, and um, but I did not. I, I missed, all. I, I saw something, and I saw distribution facilities, and they thought they were transmission. Second thing is, is I, and I don't know if you want to recognize her, but Mrs. Blackwell's been raising her hand. I think she had something else she wanted to say. Ms. Blackwell. I 
in response to Mr. Adams, I live there. I live on one of those four acre lots and I can tell you there are plenty of those. I believe you live on a large lot, don't you? And this will open the floodgates. Once that MDR is on the map, they can say, well, there's MDR over there. We don't have that condition now where there is anything developed according to MDR. We have a lot of elderly people. I worry now, is my neighbor, when is my neighbor next door gonna die? That's four acres. How many houses will go there? Will it be more than doubled because of this change? And as far as that argument, that argument, they roll that out every time. Oh, they'll never get that many houses on that site. Well, Tom Hammond, believe me, he will get nearly that. There are nine acres in Beulah where the maximum density, it's LDR, the maximum he could get on there was 36 houses. With, and he somehow managed to get a uh, drainage pond, streets, and 35 houses. He lost one, one unit. So that is, you know, that's just a, a false argument that they make repeatedly here. So, um, uh, Mr. Adams, yes, this will open the floodgates. We have a lot of elderly residents. We have people inheriting that property that will want to make top dollar on it. I think that's what, ha you know, may be happening in this case, the heirs, you know. So, um, so yes, there are many of us with horses, larger lots, move there for the rural lifestyle, and this will open those floodgates. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blackwell. Noted. All right. Uh, there's not any more questions for staff or the applicant. Do we have? Yes, sir. If you'll come up to the mic, um, Mr. Sellers. I was just curious. I was looking at the pictures. He sworn, Mr. Chairman. He he was sworn in earlier. Okay. Yes, sir. I was just curious. Is that that picture right there? That lot is just north of me. And then our two lots would be the one house on, on the five acres together. And I was just curious, I wonder why our picture wasn't in there. They showed everything else around, but they just kind of like passed us. Okay. Yeah. Just a question. Thank are, you. Are you, are you then, adjacent um, to this property? Um, go back up to your, to your map. I'll show you where you, where you were before. Okay. We would be the two lots. Well, it would be towards the top right there. You, you can see the house and the, yeah, and the barn and the, the barn down there. So yeah, right there. we would be right there. And of course, there's no pictures of our place. Um, just curious. I was just kind of wondering. There might have been. There's probably a picture facing yeah, north on Tower Ridge north. Road. Yeah, that's, be, that's the property they want. That's beside us. And then, of course, that's on the other side. We're building the new house. Now, about where that. That way. About where that car is, that would be the, the, the beginning of our fence there where the block okay. stops and the wood fence starts. So it looks like we've got these listed wrong, named wrong, because south yeah. would, that, that looks would, like well, it's north. The, now that is going north, the way yeah. the car is directed. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's just list named wrong. I guess I don't know my direction very well. <laughs> <clears throat> and when I took pictures, I usually take the pro property site right across the street and then up and down the main street so i didn't go well, in the car noticed, to drive over there and, and I just take that. that you took a picture of the trailer and the other stuff of course there's one house on, all, on ours well i just took straight we just go north south east and west i mean okay. i would have had to get in the car and go down there i i, I could have sorry i didn't know. all right thank you mr sellers all right so we've got no further comments or questions um, I would entertain a. I moved. A and, I moved to approve Z twenty twenty two dash zero seven. All right, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we've got a motion by Gary, a second by Eric. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor of the motion for approval, raise your right hand. All those opposed, raise your right hand. Motion passes three to two. All right, Mr. Chairman, I need a five minute break. All right, we're going to take a five minute break for the restroom and then we will uh, come back with case number Z2022 8.
All right, we will uh, get this show back on the road here. <laughs> All right, uh, we have our second case today is Z2022-8, uh, which requests rezoning of property 3900 BLK Molino Road, 3900 Block Molino Road, um, from AGR to Rural Residential by Joshua and Sandy Weber. Uh, members of the board, have there been any ex parte communication between you and the applicant of the applicant's agents, attorneys, or witnesses with fellow planning board members or anyone from the general public prior to this hearing? Have you visited the subject property? And please also disclose if you are a relative or business associate of the applicant or the applicant's agent. Uh, Mr. Adams. No to all. No to all. No to all. Uh, Chair, no to all. No to all. No to all. No to all. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, staff, was notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Was notice of the hearing posted on the subject property? Yes, sir. All right. Um, let's see. Applicant, would you like the um, the staff to go ahead and present the photos before? All right. Okay, so the Z202208, this is the location map showing the location on Molina Road. This is the zoning map showing the, um, agri the zoning map of AG and RR. This is the future land use of RC, rural community. This is the flood zone map showing uh, that there's a little bit of uh, flood zone on the bottom of this property. And this is the wetlands map showing it does have some kind of isolated wetlands on the site. <coughs> and this is the aerial photography of the property. This is the public hearing sign that was posted on site on Molina Road. This is looking into a portion of the property 
this is another view of the property from across the street. This is looking across Molino Road from the property. This is looking west on Molina Road from the subject parcel. And this is looking east along Molina Road from the subject property. This is looking, okay, and that was all the maps and photography. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, I'll have the applicant please come forward. Mr. Weber, is that you, I presume? Okay, great. I think you've, I've got the only speaker form is you, and um, I would, you obviously are in favor of this. So uh, if you could just state your name and full address for the record and, and be sworn in. Uh, my name is Joshua Weber. Uh, I'm at 3645 Molino Road. Okay. Raise your right hand. Just honestly swear or affirm. Testimony about to be in this case is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, have you received a copy of the rezoning hearing package with the findings of fact? I uh, believe so, yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Do you understand that you have the burden of providing by substantial competent evidence the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan? furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan and is not in conflict with any portion of the county's land development code? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you in agreement with staff's findings of fact that you received? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I think in this case, so we don't have any other speakers uh, on this case. Um, we could, if you'd like, we could have staff go through uh, all their findings. Um, or we can kind of do this as an expedited case uh, like we do sometimes when we have something like this come before us. Um, so if you're in agreement with staff's findings um, and that we don't have any questions from anybody on the board, um, we can expedite it. So sure. you're good with, with what you saw. Okay, great. Yes, um, if that's the case, then uh, the chair will entertain a motion. In agreement with staff's findings, I make a motion that we approve case number 202208. Second. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, this is our third case, our application for consideration in case Z-2022-9, uh, which requests rezoning of property, let's see, 1415, 1501, and 1503 Lansing Drive from HDR to commercial. Uh, and this is requested uh, through Meredith Bush, agent for Lansing Park, and Elna Hayes. Uh, members of the board, have there been any ex parte communication between you and the applicant of the applicant's agents, attorneys, or witnesses with, fan, with any fellow planning board members or anyone from the general public prior to this hearing? Have you visited the subject property? And please also disclose if you or a relative or business associate of the applicant or the applicant's agent. Mr. Adams. No at all. No at all. Chair, no to all. No to all. No to all. No to all. All right. Staff, was notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Was notice of the hearing posted on the subject pro property? Yes, sir. All right. Um, Ms. Bush, if you're good with it, we can have staff go through their theirs first, or if you would like to go first, either way. You can go ahead. All right. We'll go ahead and go with staff. Okay, so the Z202209 on Lansing, this is the uh, location map showing the location uh, on Lansing, between Lansing and Creighton. This is the radius, 500 foot radius zoning map showing HDR commercial. This is the future land use map showing mixed use urban. This is the existing land use map. This is the aerial photography showing the site uh, outlined in red. This is the public hearing sign. This is looking into the uh, parcel on Lansing. <clears throat> this is looking east along Lansing. This is looking west along Lansing. This is looking across Lansing from uh, a, one of the parcels. This is the view from Creighton Road. Um, if you notice, that's, I think, the vascular center and the access for this parcel 
off of Creighton. This is another view um, just um, that backs up the on Creighton that backs up to the Lansing property. This is looking west along Creighton Road. And this is looking east along Creighton. And those ones on Creighton are just mainly to show you the commercial component that are on Creighton that I believe the actual access will be from. That's the end of maps and photography. All right. Thanks so much. Um, I, I suppose we'll have you come forward. And we'll have you go through this again, state your name and address for the record. And um, I guess what? We don't need to swear you in, correct, as, as an attorney. Um, so, have you received a copy of the rezoning hearing package with findings of fact? Yes. Um, my name is Meredith Bush. I'm an attorney at Clark Partington. Address is 125 East in Tendencia, Pensacola, 32502. Great. Uh, and then do you understand that you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan, and is not in conflict with any portion of the county's land development code. I do. All right. The floor is yours. Um, I'm happy to walk through my findings again. I, it appears there are no members of the public present. Yeah. Other we do than, have one speaker. Um, that's the developer of okay. the property, and I may have him speak just to reserve his ability to speak at the Board of County Commissioners. But if you would like to have staff go through this as an expedited hearing, since we're in agreement with their findings and they support the request, I'm happy to do that as well. It's up to you. All right. Sounds good. If anybody, anybody good with that up here? Um, and then if Mr. Kimling, if you plan to speak at the county commission meeting, we will need to get you sworn in and uh, state your name and address so that you can speak uh, at that meeting in a few weeks. All right. Hey, Chair. Yes, sir. I want to have to um, retract my earlier statement that I'm um, not aware or no um, uh, relationship. I just realized as I was going through the, you know, uh, the um, <coughs> Sunbiz that this is one of my clients. Mm. Um, okay, fair enough. And so I do need to disclose that it is one of my uh, clients and this uh, project, if gone, uh, will probably get the insurance on it, and I will make money on it. So I need to disclose that. Okay, so we'll probably legally ask you to abstain from from voting on this. I'll defer to you, though. Yeah, yes, Mr. Rushing, that appears to be a clear conflict. Um, staff will get you the disclosure form, um, but you would abstain from this vote. Sounds good. Thank you. We still, yeah, we still have a quorum with uh, the other other four voting members of the board, so we're. Good to go. All right. Hello, my name is Todd Kimling. I live at uh, 3786 May Apple Lane, Signal Mountain, Tennessee. I work for Noon Development, representing the developer on this project. All right. Thanks so much. Um, and we've got you in the record. Do we, we need to have him sworn in? Okay. And if you'd like to add, add any comments uh, in favor of this, uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then again, we just wanted to make sure that you have the ability to speak at, at the Board of County Commission meetings if, if you need to. Yeah, no comment, but I'm here to answer any questions. All right. Thanks so much. All right, we've got no other speakers uh, that have signed up for this case. Um, we've had a request to expedite this from the applicant uh, who's in agreement with all the findings of fact. So if uh, we have no opposition from this board on that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion uh, regarding case Z2022 tax 09 based on staff's findings, recommend approval. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, is there any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, any abstentions? One. So passes four to zero with Mr. Rushing uh, abstaining from the vote. All right. Chairman, if I yes, can make a comment on the record, I, one of these pictures of uh, mm -hmm. the signs, it has an incorrect case on here. Um, I just want to make note of it so I can change it before it goes to the BCC. Okay. Um, do, do I need to make a vote? Does that need does to go that, on the motion? Yes, you. 
Yes, if you would take a separate vote, if you could identify for the record which page number it is, and then the board could take take a simple vote to exclude that and accept the remainder of the backup into evidence. It would be page 132. All right, so we need um, a subsequent motion to accept the, the, ba the edited backup Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, it would be a motion to accept the, the backup into evidence uh, less what is currently on page 132, um, and the staff can make that amendment or revision before this goes to the BCC. All right, so the chair will entertain a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept, uh, make a motion uh, to uh, recommend approval uh, with the updated staff's findings and presentation minus page 132. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, um, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, any abstentions? All right. Uh, we have a vote four to zero with one abstention by Mr. Rushing. All right, so I think that comes to the conclusion of all of our cases today. Um, do we have a report from the director? Thank you. Okay, do we have, uh, I skipped one thing, do we, I don't think we have anybody for public forum, but just want to make sure. Uh, is there a county attorney's report? Uh, not today, Mr. Chairman. Not today, okay. Great. Um, the next rezoning planning board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, August the 2nd, 2022, right here in this room at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, is there anything else from staff? I will just note that there's at least three rezoning cases and a potential of two to three ordinances that will be coming. Okay, great. All right. Well, um, we'll get our, our regular boss back in here next month and uh, get back to it. So we all have a good rest of the week and um, stay safe out there. Well, go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Did you have something to add real quick? Sorry. I did. I just wanted to say that I thought the acting uh, chairman did a great job. First time I'm I'll, I'll, I'll second that. that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, yes, I was going to add one thing. Uh, uh, a while back, some of the people this, on this day has asked about potential impact on subdivisions. You know, what's the worst case? I will tell you, I saw the first interaction I've seen in a long time between the county and the district, school district. So I just appreciate what y'all did. So there was communication going on, what possible impact, and that's the way it should be. Correct. So I appreciate it. Yes. I apologize for being late. We had a loose parrot. Home. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, we're we're adjourned.